brought your Bible this morning, let's lift it up. And let's make this confession together. This is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. The incorruptible seed. The incorruptible seed. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. Praise God, I'll never be the same. Praise God, I'll never be the same. Father, we want to thank you this morning, Lord, for once again allowing us, Lord God, to, to have this uh, privilege this opportunity, Lord, to be gathered together in Your name, Lord God, to experience a brand new touch upon our lives. Lord, we know that each time, Lord God, that we willingly come into the blessing of Your presence, Father God, into Your holy anointing, Lord God, it is Your anointing that breaks the yoke. Lord, breaks those bondages off of our lives. Lord, delivers us, Lord God, from compulsive behaviors and, and habits and addictions, Lord God. Father God, it pulls down those strongholds, Lord God, Lord, and it allows liberty, Lord God, to, to flow in our lives, Lord God, and to flow through us. Father, we want to thank you, Lord God, for deliverance here this morning. We want to thank you for healing in our bodies, Lord God, in our minds, Lord God. We want to thank you, Lord God, Lord, for all that you continue to do for us, Father God. We thank you for that brother or sister to the left of us, that brother or sister to the right of us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for putting them in our lives, Lord God, that we can that we can worship you together, Lord, that we can serve together with them, Lord God. And Lord, we, we speak blessings of peace and prosperity, Lord, and health and long life upon them as well, Father. Lord, we, we love you and we thank you in the wonderful name of Jesus and all of God's people said. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Well, I believe the Lord has given us a, a wonderful word here today, and I am very excited about it because I believe there's going to be people that's going to leave this place changed this morning. Amen. Amen. And we're going to look at the, the uh, scripture in the, in the uh, book of Proverbs, the, the fourth chapter, verses 20 through 22, where it says, My son, Give attention to my words. Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my word. I just get a picture of someone just really stretching their neck out, wanting to hear the word of God. Incline your ear to my word, for it is life to those who find it and health to all their flesh. It's life to those who find it, and health to all their flesh. Now how many do we, have, do we have here today that God has healed your body once and maybe even many times? Look around you. Amen. God has healed your body. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That's wonderful. But you know what? Even in spite of this overwhelming evidence that yes, God heals. I'll guarantee you that there's people sitting here this morning. Yes. They believe that God heals, but they believe it's always for somebody else and not for them. Come on. And if that's the case, then this message is for you this morning. Because God wants to heal you. Turn to your neighbor and say, God wants to heal me. Come on. Say it with enthusiasm. God wants to say it with some faith. God wants to heal me. Say it like you believe it. Brothers and sisters, I believe if we're to know God, we've got to know Him as our healer. Amen. Exodus 15, 26 says, For I am the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord who heals you. Now the Israelites called Him their Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. The Lord, our healer. Praise God. And if you don't know God as your healer this morning, then you're missing out on a very major dimension of your relationship with God. Amen. Somebody said, well, I believe that, that God's promise to heal is only to the Israelites. Well, let's see what the Word says. <clears throat> Jesus said in John 6, 38, He says, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of Him who sent me. So as we follow Jesus through the four Gospels, we find that His compassion for the sick was constantly evident. Amen? 
And he and we find that he even ministered healing to the daughter of a Canaanite woman who was not an Israelite. Here in Matthew 15, 24, Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay? But in verse 26, we, Jesus said something here that seems so heartless and so rude, where he said it's not proper to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. Now we'd have probably just right there, we'd have lost it, either got mad and stomped the way or... Or, you know, I don't know how we would have reacted to a, to a reply like that. But the Canaanite woman replied in verse 27, It is the truth, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Whoa. What was it that made Jesus honor this Gentile dog of a woman? It was her faith. It was her faith, praise God. This woman wasn't going to back off. She wasn't going to quit. But she believed that Jesus was a healer and she wasn't going to settle for anything less. I mean, he's right there. I am not going to settle for anything less. Praise God. And Jesus replied in verse 28, and here it is, O woman, great is your faith. Be it unto you as you wish. And don't you know her daughter was healed? Amen. So we see here that faith crossed the barriers of race and nationality and it touched the very heart of God. Faith moves God. Faith doesn't stand around with its hands in its pockets. Faith doesn't shut up. Faith doesn't quit. Amen. But it touches the heart of God. What is God's heart? The Holy Spirit revealed this very thing to John here when he wrote in 3 John 1 and 2. Actually, there's only one chapter. Verse 2, where he said, Beloved, I wish above all things, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Praise God. As our soul prospers, and what that means is as we learn to practice kingdom principles, as we learn to give attention to God's Word, as we incline our ear to hear God's Word, Amen. He brings healing to our lives. And that means even as you hear this Word this morning, and believe it in your heart. I believe you'll be healed right where you sit. Praise God. Do you believe it? Thank you, Jesus. God's heart is for you and I to be healed. You see, the work at the cross was a total work of redemption. And when Jesus died on the cross, He said, it is finished. Total work. God's plan was a total plan. And it was complete concerning our salvation. And what I'm saying is, it wasn't just for the redemption or the salvation of our soul, but once again, Proverbs 4.22 says, for His Word is life to those who find it, and it is health to all their flesh. Praise God. Now the word salvation itself comes from the Greek word soter, which means to be made whole, or to be made complete, in every area of your life. Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, he said, The very God of peace sanctify you completely. I pray to God that your whole, you as a whole, <clears throat> spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus at the cross paid the total price for our whole well-being. He paid the total price. Praise God. And, and Isaiah even prophesied, this was long before Jesus went to the cross, <clears throat> but Isaiah prophesied in chapter 53, verse 5, says, but He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement for our peace was laid upon Him. And by His stripes, we are healed. 